Greetings and hello. Welcome to another episode of Haunted Indiana, Ghosts and Strange Phenomenon of the Hoosier State, written by James A. Willis. Tonight is episode 8, World's Largest Ghost Hunt. With today's plethora of ghost reality shows, ghost hunts have become all the rage. Most states, including Indiana, have locations that, for a price, offer people the chance to conduct their own overnight ghost hunts. Uh, two of my friends are on a team, actually. A link in to their Facebook page will be in the description below. But it wasn't always the case. Many Hoosiers are surprised to find that back in 1965, a small stretch of road in the northwest Indiana was home to what has become known as the world's largest ghost hunt. If you're heading north out of Valparaiso towards Chesterton, you will more than likely find yourself on Campbell Street. It's here, many years before the road was put in, that our story begins. It is said that the local school teacher, Annabelle, lived here with her husband and her infant son. Unfortunately, Annabelle's husband, who had always had something of a temper, had become worse once their son was born. He was now lashing out at Annabelle, including abusing her physically. Fearing for their safety of both herself and her son, Annabelle secretly made the decision to leave her husband. One cold winter evening, she waited for her husband to fall asleep and then wrapped her baby son and snuck out the front door, heading towards town on foot. Suddenly, a, frank, a freak winter storm blew up, making it nearly impossible for Annabelle to see where she was going. As she held her son closer to her for warmth, Stint realized that she had changed direction and was no longer walking towards town. In fact, she was heading deeper and deeper into the woods. Try as she might, Annabelle could not find her way. Eventually, the mother and son perished in the storm. Several days later, still frozen bodies were found in the woods. Almost immediately after Annabelle's passing, there were reports of her ghost appearing in the woods, but because of the location of her death, was in a fairly isolated and wooded area. Few people ever ventured out there. All that changed years later when Campbell Street was created. With a portion cut very close to the spot where Annabelle and the baby expired. Soon, reports poured in of a young woman standing at the edge of the woods near the side of Campbell Street. In most cases, the ghost just stood there silently, but sometimes it appeared to be beckoning people to come closer, as if she was asking for help. For the next several years, the ghost story of Annabelle remained popular, but only among the locals. Sorry, that was my cats. <laughs> Talk about timing, huh? For whatever reason, all that changed on October 1965. It started innocently enough with a couple of local high school students sharing the story with some classmates who were unfamiliar with it. But when some classmates decided to add, this, add to the story and claimed to have actually seen Annabelle's ghost recently, before long, interest in the story had been rekindled, and began to spread like wildfire. Soon, all the high schools between Valparaiso and Chesterton were abuzz with the story, while, dozen of, while dozens of curious students began making plans for late night trips out to Campbell Street. Even the parents of the high school students who had grown up with the story took a renewed interest in the tale. Before long, as night fell on Campbell Street, it became clogged with cars crawling along in the darkness, filled with faces pressed against the windows, hoping to see a ghost. 
As Halloween drew closer, the decision was made that something had to be done to curb the amount of people cruising up and down Campbell Street. So the Indiana State Police were called in and did their best to keep things flowing. It is said that thousands of people visited Campbell Street that October with the hopes of seeing a ghost, but Annabelle failed to show up. Perhaps, just like some people, ghosts can be frightened away by crowds. Whatever the case may be, later in the in 1970s, the BBC ran a segment about the event, calling it the world's largest ghost hunt. Unofficially, it remains the largest one to date. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you've missed any of these episodes, head on over to my channel. Check out my Haunted Indiana playlist. Catch yourself up. If you like anything else you see, uh, feel free to subscribe because all my subscribers are awesome. And I will catch you guys later.